Dawn Foster. I have been doing, I've been working with communities for about a dozen years. So my specialty has always been um, open source communities and developer communities, which have been around for a very long time. Um, I'm currently at Puppet Labs. I've been there for a week. So it's <laughs> still, still fairly new. Um, it's a great company though, I'm super excited. Before that, I was the community lead for Intel's Open Source Technology Center and I was a community manager at Jive, amongst other places. So I'm actually the one on this panel who has no marketing background whatsoever. So I generally think of community management as you know, only when you're talking about a group of people who, who really share something. So if you're, if, you know, if you're just talking about maybe something that's, you know, if you're talking about Twitter as a whole, I don't see that as a community. I do see little groups of people within, you know, within social media who are acting like a community. But I, I think we need to be careful to separate the tools from the process of community management. I, I think you have to, as much as you possibly can, um, having both an online and an offline component, component is really powerful. So we do this in in tech communities with you know conferences or meetups or you know camps something like that but um, so it does help strengthen it but it's I would say that the offline component is not necessarily um, not necessarily needed uh, the Linux kernel community for example some of the top people had never met each other for yeah. the first couple of years that they worked on it um, and they were building a whole you know kernel of an operating system which is pretty fantastic um, and then in some communities um, you know, there's, you know, a sensitive nature that yeah. you wouldn't want to meet in, you know, real life because there's some, you know, a medical issue or there's all of these other communities. Yeah, so, so my interactions are probably a little bit different because our communities are based in tools like mailing lists and um, IRC channels, which is basically a big, giant, obnoxious chat room. Um, I'm and, sorry. and bug trackers and code repositories. So the stuff that we do is a little bit different, but it, a lot of the community re really revolves around the mailing list. So that's where people generally talk about issues. So I spend a lot of time going through, going through email and, and seeing what people are saying and highlighting things that I think are going to be issues that we need to talk about internally or pointing people in the right direction if there's somebody they should be talking to that they're not already talking to. And then carving out time for planning, you know, looking at where do we need to make improvements? How do we find time to do that? You know, what's the strategy long term? Are we in a position to actually get there? And what do we need to do differently? So it's this always this weird mix of, you know, tactical stuff and then strategic planning that you need to do for the community. And the fun thing about community management is it's totally different every single day and you just you never know when something's gonna blow up and trash your whole schedule and depending on where your community is kind of drives your schedule as well. When I was doing a community that had a lot of European participation, um, all morning I was doing like the tactical triage stuff and I had this really nice chunk of time towards the end of the day where I could do the strategic things. I actually try not to be the first person to respond um, uh, because the, the communities that I manage, the people are incredibly supportive and so I would rather have them supporting each other and not have not have to jump in unless I really need to. If something's escalating out of control, then I'll certainly jump in. If there's, you know, somebody needs a quick pointer to a document that I know exactly where it is, I'll jump in. Um, but I actually tend to wait, and I'd, I'd rather have the engineers who are working on the code reply to people's technical questions um, than for me to do it. Or have, you know, other peers who are people who are using our software um, reply to the question. So I was doing community consulting a few years ago and I would have clients come to me, potential clients, and they would say, hey, I want you to help us do Twitter and Facebook. Um, or I just bought this very expensive community platform and installed it and now it helped me with my strategy. Yeah. Um, I'm like, you could have done the strategy before you purchased the big expensive tool exactly. to figure out what you wanted. But, but I always back them way up and I, you know, I would say, hey, you know, well, let's talk about what are you trying to accomplish? What are your corporate goals? What are your marketing goals? What are the goals for this community? And then we'll talk about which tools are going to be most appropriate for you. But people get really excited about tools. Yes. And they get as, as a technologist, them. I'll admit, I'm, you know, I get excited about tools. But if but you build it, they will come, right? Yes. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's the way it works. <laughs> Yeah, and in, in my community, it's, it's really fairly separate because the marketing team manages the blog, they manage the Twitter account, they manage the social media, um, and then I'm in community, and I, I don't sit in marketing, I sit in a technical organization, and I handle all of the, the mailing lists, the IRC, all of the, you know, all of the community management around this, around this technical community, but I'm tied very closely into marketing because 
you know, one of the worst things you can have is, you know, marketing is going off in one direction with a certain position and your community manager is saying something that's, you know, how do I say this delicately? Sometimes, don't, don't, um, don't <laughs> sometimes big companies, it's very, very difficult to get buy-in at the executive level for, um, especially for open source communities where you've got all this transparency where, yeah. you know, people reply to the mailing list using their, you know, corporate email address, you know exactly who they are, what they're saying. It can be very, very difficult to get that kind of corporate buy-in um, at very large um, conservative companies. Um, and so how do you get it? You know, it, it just depends. I mean, I, you know, some of the companies I've, I've worked with have been, you know, Fortune 50 companies, and, and at that level, you know, I'm not gonna be able to talk to the CEO to convince him of something. Um, so it just, it just depends on the community. Honestly, a big part of why I took the job at, at Puppet Labs is because the CEO, Luke, really gets community. He, he understands why it's important. It's a key focus for the company, and um, it's, you know, it's a great environment for a community manager to work in.